We're going to start the Chaitanya Bhagavat by Vrindavan Das Thakur. Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastar Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nubhisesa Sinyavadi Paskitari Satarani So evidently there are three main accounts of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes and his activities, Leela in his incarnation five hundred years ago. One account is given by Lotran Das and he primarily was focused on the childhood pastimes, from what I understand. I haven't read his Chaitanya Mangala yet, but the plan is to read that also. And then there's Vrindavan Das Thakur and his Chaitanya Bhagavat, which also focuses primarily on the earlier pastimes of the Lord in great depth. He goes into great depth and detail. believe he was a disciple of Lord Nityananda. And so there's uh, a lot about Lord Nityananda in his account also. Well, we'll find out. And then there's Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is the account that Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami chose to translate with his commentaries into English and for distribution around the world, translated into other languages also. <clears throat> it was originally written in Bengali, but this was the, the account that um, Bhaktivedanta Prabhupada chose. And he, um, from what I understand, is uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj was able to fill in some of the the time periods that weren't, the activities of the time periods for Lord Chaitanya that weren't discussed or presented in, by the other two devo devotees, acharyas, specifically some of the later pastimes. The, it's a little bit more on the Maja Leela and especially the Adi Leela, the later pastimes. <clears throat> so we're going to begin with Chaitanya Bhagavat. And this is um, the Adikanda. Chapter One. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shirvaita Gadhar Shivasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. <clears throat> and this is chapter one, it's titled A Summary of the Lord's Pastimes. I offer my respectful obeisances to the two fathers of the Sankirtan movement whose long arms reach to their knees, who are splendid like gold, whose large eyes are lotus flowers, who are the maintainers of the worlds, the best of the Brahmins and the protectors of the Yuga Dharma, the religion of the age, who bring happiness to the people of the world and who have come to this place because they're very merciful. O Lord who exists eternally in three phases of time, O son of Jagannath Mishra, O Lord accompanied by your servants, sons and wives, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. In Marari Gupta's Kadacha, it is said, I worship the two brothers, Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Sri Nityananda, the two masters of the spiritual world, who, concealing their true identities, have mercifully descended to this world. Glory to the Supreme Lord, who is all powerful and pure, who is splendid like gold, 
whose eyes are blossoming lotus flowers, whose arms reach to his knees, and who flooded by the nectar of devotional service, dances in many ways. Glory, glory to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna Chaitanya Chandra. Glory, glory to his eternal pure fame. And glory, glory to the servant of him, the master of the worlds. Glory to the dancing of his dear devotees. First, I offer Dandavada obeisances to the dear devotees of Lord Chaitanya. Then, I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He incarnated in the town of Navadweep, and he's named Vishrambar. In the Vedas and Puranas, the Lord has firmly declared, Worship of my devotees is better than worship of me. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord himself declares, Worshipping my devotees is better than worshipping me directly. That is my opinion. Therefore, I will begin by offering respectful obeisances to the devotees. That act will bring success to my efforts. I offer respectful obeisances to my worshipful deity, Lord Nityananda Ram, by whose mercy the glory of Lord Chaitanya is manifest in this world. With a thousand mouths, I offer respectful obeisances to Lord Balaram, whose thousand mouths are the home of Lord Krishna's glories. As a great jewel is kept in a favorite place, so the jewel of Lord Krishna's glories is kept in the jewelry case of Lord Ananta's mouth. A person that offers prayers to Lord Balaram will find the glories of Lord Chaitanya appear in his mouth. Lord Balaram is thousand-headed Lord Ananta. There may be many masters in this world, but he is independent of all of them. Lord Balaram Mahaprabhu is very tall. He's a, very, he's a great saint, intoxicated by hearing the glories of Lord Chaitanya Chandra. In his form of Nityananda, he enjoys pastimes with Lord Chaitanya eternally. No one is more dear to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya becomes a friend and a help to one who hears or sings Lord Chaitananda's glories. Shiva and Parvati find great bliss in Lord Nityananda. On their tongues are pure and eloquent words glorifying Lord Nityananda. Accompanied by Goddess Parvati and 900 million goddesses, Shiva worships Lord Shankarshan. This is described in Shrimad Bhagavatam 5th Canto. All Vaishnavas offer obeisances to Lord Balaram and praise him with songs. Words describing Lord Balaram's rasa dance pastimes are supremely glorious. He enjoyed many pastimes with the gopis in Vrindavan. During Madhava and Madhu, the two months of springtime, Lord Balaram enjoyed the rasa dance pastime. This is described in the Puranas. Please hear these words Sri Shukadev spoke to Maharaj Pariksit. Please hear these verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. In order to keep the gopis in Vrindavan satisfied, Lord Balaram stayed there continuously for two months, namely the months of Chaitra, March, April, and Vaishaka, April, May. For those two months he kept himself among the gopis, and he passed every night with them in the forest of Vrindavan in order to satisfy the desire for conjugal love. Thus Balaram also enjoyed the rasa dance with the gopis during those two months. Since the season was springtime, the breeze on the bank of the Amuna was blowing very mildly, carrying the aroma of different flowers, especially of the flower known as kamudi. Moonlight filled the sky and spread everywhere, and thus the banks of the Amuna appeared to be very bright and pleasing, and Lord Balaram enjoyed the company of the gopis there. As the Gandharva sang his, sang his glories, Lord Balaram enjoyed the gopis in the same way Indi Indra's elephant, Iratava, enjoys with many she-elephants. Then Dundubi drums sounded in the sky. The Gandharvas joyfully showered flowers and the sages praised Lord Balaram and his heroic deeds. Although they rebuke ordinary souls for associating with women, the sages praised Balaram's rasa dance with the gopis. Fully aware that Balaram and Krishna are not different persons, 
The demigods showered flowers on Lord Balaram's Rasa dance. Although they are hidden from the four Vedas, Lord Balaram's pastimes are openly described in the Puranas. What more need I say? Some fools may say, I do not see that in the Puranas. There's no evidence that Lord Balaram ever enjoyed a Rasa dance. To them I reply, the two brothers, Krishna and Balaram, did certainly enjoy Rasa dance with the gopis in Vrindavan Forest. This is described in the following words of Srimapagvatam. After this incident, on a very pleasant night, both Krishna and his elder brother Balaram, who are inconceivably powerful, went into the forest of Vrindavan. They were accompanied by the damsels of Rajabhumi, and they began to enjoy each other's company. The young damsels of Raj were very nicely dressed and anointed with pulp of sandalwood and decorated with flowers. The moon was shining in the sky, surrounded by glittering stars, and the breeze was blowing, bearing the aroma of malika flowers, and the bumblebees were mad after the aroma. Taking advantage of the pleasing atmosphere, both Krishna and Balaram began to sing very melodiously. Anyone who has no love for Lord Balaram, even after hearing these words of Srimad Bhagavatam, does not walk on the path of the Vaishnavas, the path that leads to Lord Vishnu. Anyone who does not honor Srimad Bhagavatam as a Yavana, birth after birth he's punished by Lord Yama. Nowadays, some eunuchs may dance around and say, In what scripture is Balaram's rasa dance? To them I reply, Who is so sinful that he will not honor the scriptures? A sinner will find another meaning in the scripture's clear words. Lord Balaram is very dear to Lord Chaitanya Chandra. By offending him, one destroys his own future. In all his incarnations, the Supreme Lord manifests in two forms. One is master and the other is servant. As a servant, the Lord appears as his own friend, brother, bed, fan, invitation, house, parasol, garments, ornaments, sitting place. Manifesting himself in all these forms, the Lord serves himself. When he has received the Lord's mercy, can understand all this. And this is described in the following words of Sri Ananta Sanhita. O Lord, to serve you, Ananta assumes many shapes to become your residence, bed, throne, sandals, garments, pillow, umbrella, parasol, many other objects. In this way, the people know him as your Shesha, paraphernalia. Powerful Garuda, who delights in carrying Lord Krishna in his pastimes, is an Amsa incarnation of Lord Ananta. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Sanaka, Sanatana, Sanandana, Sanatkumar, Vyasadeva, Sukadeva Goswami, and Narada are all pure devotees, eternal servants of the Lord. Lord Sri Ananta is worshipped by all the uncontaminated devotees mentioned above. He has thousands of hoods and is the reservoir of all devotional service. Lord Ananta is the original person and the great mystic controller. At the same time, he's a servant of God, a Vaishnava. Since there's no end to his glories, no one can understand him fully. I've already spoken to you of his service to the Lord. Now hear how the self-effulgent Ananta Dev exists in the lower planetary systems of Patala. Bearing his stringed instrument, a tamburu on his shoulders, the great sage Narada Muni always glorifies Lord Ananta. Narada Muni has composed many transcendental praises, verses in praise of the Lord. Lord Ananta is described in the following words of Srimad Bhagavatam. By his glance, the Supreme Personality of Godhead enables the modes of material nature to act as the causes of universal creation, maintenance, and destruction. The Supreme Soul is unlimited and beginningless, and although he is one, he has manifested himself in many forms. How can human society understand the ways of the Supreme? The manifestation of subtle and gross matter exists within the Personality of Godhead. Out of his causeless mercy toward his devotees, he exhibits various forms which are all transcendental. The Supreme Lord is most liberal, and he possesses all mystic powers. To conquer the minds of his devotees and give pleasure to their hearts, he appears in different incarnation and manifests many pastimes. 
even if he be distressed or degraded, any person who chants the holy name of the Lord, having heard it from a bona fide spiritual master, is immediately purified. <clears throat> even if he chants the Lord's name jokingly or by chance, he and anyone who hears him are freed from all sins. Therefore, how can anyone seeking disentanglement from the material clutches avoid chanting the name of Lord Shesha? Of whom else should one take shelter? Because the Lord is unlimited, no one can estimate his power. This entire universe, filled with its many great mountains, rivers, ocean trees, and living entities, is resting just like an atom on one of his many thousands of hoods. Is there anyone, even with thousands of tongues, who can describe his glories? There's no end to the great and glorious qualities of that powerful Lord Anantadev. Indeed, his prowess is unlimited. Though he is self-sufficient, he himself is the support of everything. He resides beneath the lower planetary systems and easily sustains the entire universe. Simply due to the glance of Lord Ananta, the three material modes of nature interact and produce creation, maintenance, and annihilation. These modes of nature appear again and again. The Lord is glorified as one without a second and as the supreme tooth who has no beginning. Therefore he is called Anantadev, unlimited. Who can understand him? His form is completely spiritual and he manifests it only by his mercy. All the activities in this material world are conducted only in his form. He is very powerful and always prepared to please his personal associates and devotees. If we simply try to engage in the congregational chanting of the glories of the Lord Anantadev, the dirty things in our hearts accumulated during many births will immediately be washed away. Therefore a Vaishnav never loses an opportunity to glorify Anantadev. Lord Anantadev is known as Sesha, the unlimited end, because he ends our passage through this material world simply by chanting his glories. Everyone can be liberated. On his head, Anantadev sustains the entire universe with its millions of planets containing enormous oceans and mountains. He is so large and powerful that this universe rests on one of his hoods just like a drop of water. He does not know where it is. While bearing the universe on one of his hoods, Anantadev chants the glories of Krishna with each of his thousands of mouths. Although he has been chanting the glories of Lord Krishna since time immemorial, he has not come to their end. To this very day, Lord Ananta continues to chant the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and still he finds no end to them. In this way, Lord Krishna and Lord Balarama describe. When they see this, Brahma, Shiva, the demigods, the siddhas, and the great sages become filled with bliss. Although again and again he tries to reach the farther shore of the ocean that is Lord Krishna's glories, Lord Ananta can never reach it. This is also described in these words of Srimad Bhagavatam. Neither I nor all the sages born before you know fully the omnipotent personality of Godhead. So what can others who are born after us know about him? Even the first incarnation of the Lord, namely Sesha, has not been able to reach the limit of such knowledge, although he is describing the dualities of the Lord the qualities, excuse me, describing the qualities of the Lord with ten hundred faces. To sustain all the material worlds, very powerful Lord Ananta says, stays in the Rasat, Rasat, Rasatala planets. In Brahma's royal assembly, Narada Muni plays his Veena Tambura and sings songs describing these qualities of the Supreme Lord. Brahma and his associates become overwhelmed with emotion when they hear the glories of the Supreme Lord. The demigods all worship Narada because he sings these songs. Thus, I have told a little something of Lord Ananta's glories. Therefore, please place your love in Lord Ananta, who is in Lord Nityananda, who is Lord Ananta himself. Anyone who desires to cross to the farther ocean shore of the ocean of birth and death and then dive into the ocean of devotional service, should worship Lord Nityananda Chandra. Before the feet of the Vaishnavas I place my heart's desire. 
May I worship Lord Balaram, birth after birth. As Dwija, Vipra, and Brahman are different names for the same kind of person, so the names Nichananda, Ananta, and Baladev all refer to the same Supreme Person. Lord Nichananda appeared in my heart and cheerfully ordered me to write a book of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Lord Sesha's tongue is the resting place of Lord Chaitanya's glories. It is only by Sesha's mercy that Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are revealed to us. For this reason, Lord Ananta Shesha has a glorious form. For this reason, I have sung some few of the glories of his lotus feet. The heart is purified by hearing Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, which are revealed to us only by the devotee's mercy. Please know this for certain. <clears throat> Who can understand Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, which are hidden even from the Vedas? I have written in this book the pastimes I have heard from the devotees. I see no beginning or end of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. I will write about them as far as I'm able. I'm a wooden puppet. Lord Chaitanya makes me dance and speak. I offer obeisances to the feet of all the Vaishnavas. In this way, all my offenses will cease to exist. Oh, my brother, please give your attention, attentive thoughts to me. Now please hear the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya enjoyed with his devotees. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are the abode of transcendental bliss. They're divided in three parts, Adikanda, Majikanda, and Anchikanda. The Adikanda is mainly the Lord's pastimes of learning. The Majikanda is Lord Chaitanya's revelation of the Sankirtan movement. And the Anchikanda is the Lord's pastime as a sannyas in Jagannath Puri. At that time, he gave to Lord Nityananda the duty of preaching in the land of West Bengal. In Navadweep lived Jagannath Misra. Like Maharaj Vasudev, he devotedly performed his prescribed duties. His wife's name was Sachi. She was very chaste and devoted. She was a second Devaki. She was like the mother of the world. In her womb, Lord Narayan, who bears the name Sri Krishna Chaitanya and who is the ornament of the world, appeared. In the Adikanda, the Lord descended to this world on the auspicious full moon evening of the month of Palgun. As the auspicious sounds of Lord Hari's holy names filled the four directions, the Supreme Lord was born. In the Adi Kanda are also the many childhood pastimes the concealed Lord revealed to his mother and father. In the Adi Kanda it is also said that in their home his mother and father saw the auspicious signs of the flag, thunderbolt, elephant goat, and pennant. In the Adi Kanda it is also said the thieves kidnapped the Lord, but the Lord tricked them and they brought him back home. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that on Akadashi, the Lord ate the prasadam offered by Jagadish and Hiranya. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that a child, the Lord would pretend to cry. In this way, he made the holy names of Lord Hari appear in every mouth. In Adi Kanda, it is also said that the Lord sat on rejected cooking pots and explained philosophy to his mother. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that Lord Chaitanya's childhood restlessness was an ocean that had no shore. Playing with the other boys, he manifested the pastimes of Gokula. In the Adi Kanda is the beginning of the Lord's duties. After very little study, he mastered all the scriptures. In the Adi Kanda are Jagannath Misra's departure for the spiritual world and Vishvarup's acceptance of sannyas. These two events made Sachi unhappy. In the Adi Kanda is the great beginning of the Lord's pastimes of scholarship. When he saw the atheists and offenders, the Lord became arrogance personified. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that the Lord would meet with all the other students and fearlessly play in the Ganga's waves. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that Lord Chaitanya conquered all the scriptures no rival scholar in all the three worlds could stand before him. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that Lord Chaitanya traveled to the country of East Bengal and sanctified it with the touch of his feet. In the Adi Kanda, it is also said that Lord Chaitanya married. When his wife returned to the spiritual world, he again married the daughter of a Raj Pandit. 
In the Adikanda, it is also said that, pretending to be sick with a malady of vital air, the Lord displayed all the symptoms of pure spiritual love, prema bhakti. In the Adi Khand, it is also said that a great pundit, as a great pundit, the Lord traveled from place to place. He gave special powers to his devotees. In the Adi Khand are also described Lord Chaitanya's transcendental bliss and splendid garments. When she gazed at the moon of his face, Sachi became filled with bliss. In the Adi Khand, it is also said that the Lord defeated a Digvijay pundit and then cut all the pundit's material bonds. In the Adi Khand, it is also said that the Lord bewildered all the devotees. Wherever he went, everyone was bewildered about his true identity. In the Adi Khand, it is also said that Lord Chaitanya went to Gaya and gave his mercy to Ishwar Puri. In the Adi Khand, the Lord enjoyed unlimited pastimes. In the future, the great sage Vyas would describe some more of those pastimes. The pastimes that begin with childhood and end with the journey to Gaya of the Lord's Adi Khanda pastimes. In the Majikanda, the Lord became known as Gorashinga. He was like a golden lion. Now, knowing his true identity, everyone became like bumblebees at his feet. In Majikanda, in the homes of Advaita and Shivas, the Lord sat on the throne of Lord Vishnu and revealed his true identity. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya meets Lord Nityananda. The two brothers then perform Sankirtan together, Kirtan together. In Majikanda, Lord Nityananda sees Chaitanya's six-armed form. In the Majikanda, Lord Advaita sees Lord Chaitanya's universal form. In Majikanda, our Lord Nityananda's Vyas Pud ceremony and the blasphemy some sinful atheist directed to the Lord. In the Majikanda is Lord Chaitanya's assumption when Lord in a place a club and plow in his hand of Lord Balaram's form. In Majikanda is the liberation of the two great sinners, Jaga and Madhe, who were famous in all the world. Majikanda Sachi sees Lord Chaitanya as dark Krishna and Lord Ananda as fair Balaram. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya reveals his pastimes of great opulence, pastimes called the ecstasies of 21 hours. On that day, the Lord described the true identity of his servants who had taken birth then. In Majikanda, in village after village, he who is Lord Narayan of Vaikuntha danced and performed kirtan of chanting his own holy names. Majikanda, the Lord breaks the Kazi's pride, manifesting his spiritual potency. The Lord performs endless kirtan. Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya's mercy, enabled the Kazi to accept the path of devotional service in this way, the Lord was able to perform kirtan whenever he wished in village after village. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya roared, revealed his form of Lord Varaha to Marara Gupta. In Majikanda, the Lord manifested a four-armed form and riding on Marari Gupta's shoulders, wandered here and there in the courtyard. In Majikanda, the Lord ate some rice collected by Sukhlambar. Majikanda, he who was Lord Narayan, enjoyed many pastimes. In Majikanda, the performance of a play, he who is Lord Narayan assumed the form of Rukmini. All the devotees then drank the milk of Rukmini's breast. In Majikanda, the Lord punished Mukunda for keeping bad association. Later, the Lord became merciful to him and was very pleased with him. In Majikanda, the Lord performed kirtan every night in Navadweep for one year. In Majikanda are the wonderful joking pastimes of Lord Nityananda and Lord Advaita. Only a fool thinks these pastimes were actual quarrels. In Majikanda, the Supreme Lord warned his mother to carefully avoid offending Vaishnavas. In Majikanda, the devotees offered prayers to the Lord and received specific benedictions. In Majikanda, Haridas attained the Lord's mercy. There also are the merciful pastimes of drinking water from Sridhar's pot. In Majikanda, the Lord daily enjoyed water pastimes in the Ganga with all his devotees. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Ananda go to Advaita's home to enjoy certain specific pastimes. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya 
harshly punished Lord Advaita, but in the end gave him great mercy. Madhikanda, very fortunate, Arari Gupta learned that Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are in truth Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram. Madhikanda, the two lords Chaitanya and Nityananda danced in Shiva's courtyard. Madhikanda, using the mouth of Shiva's dead son, the Lord explained the truth about the individual souls and thus dispelled all grief. Madhikanda, by Lord Chaitanya's mercy, Shrivas forgot his grief for his son. This was learned by all. Majikanda, distraught Nityananda and Haridas, saved Lord Chaitanya from drowning in the Ganga. In Majikanda, Narayani attained the remnants of Lord Chaitanya's plate, remnants even the demigod Brahma could not easily attain. In Majikanda, Lord Chaitanya accepted sannyas in order to deliver all the conditioned souls. The pastimes in the Majikanda begin with the performance of kirtan and end with acceptance of sannyas. In the Madhyakanda are many millions of pastimes. Veda Vyas will later describe them all. In Seshakanda, hearing that Lord Chaitanya Shika is now shaved, Lord Advaita wept. In Seshakanda, Sachi's indescribable grief is a little described. It is only by Lord Chaitanya's power that she was able to remain alive. In Seshakanda, Lord Nityananda, who is hot tempered Lord Balaram himself, broke Lord Chaitanya's sannyas danda. Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Puri, concealing his true identity. He enjoyed many pastimes there. In Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya at first te teased Sarvabhuma, but in the end showed him his six armed form to Sarvabhuma. In Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya delivered King Prataparudra. The Lord made his home in Kasi Mishra's house. Seshakanda, Swarup Damodar, Paramananda Puri, these two were qualified to attain the Lord's personal association. Seshakanda, the Lord returned to West Bengal. He blissfully said, <clears throat> I will see Mathura. In Seshakanda, the Lord stayed in Vidya Vachaspati's home. Then the Lord went to the village of Kuliya. In Seshakanta, limitless millions of people came to see the Lord. All attained liberation. In Seshakanda, the Lord went to see Mathura. Still, after traveling for a certain distance, the Lord turned back. In Seshakanda, after he returned to Jagannath Puri, the Lord always performed tumultuous kirtans with his devotees. In Seshakanda, after sending Lord Ananda to West Bengal, Lord Chaitanya stayed in Jagannath Puri with some close associates. In Seshakanda, accompanied by his devotees, Lord Chaitanya happily danced before Lord Jagannath's chariot. Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya traveled to Setubanda, Jarikanda, and Mathura. Seshakanda, the Lord delivered Ramananda Roy. In the Seshakanda, the Lord enjoyed many pastimes with Ramananda Roy. In the Seshakanda, the Lord met Dabir Khas. Aware of their true identity, the Lord delivered these two brothers from bondage and gave them the names Rupa and Sanatan. In the Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya traveled to Varnasi. The sannyasis there, who were all blasphemers, cannot see his true identity. Seshakanda, Lord Chaitanya returned to Jagannath Puri, where day and night he chanted the holy names of Lord Hari. In Seshikanda, Lord Nityananda enjoyed nectar pastimes as for some days he wandered over the earth. No one can understand his limitless pastimes. Wearing tinkling anklets, he enjoyed pastimes in all the places of Mathura. In the Seshikanda, Lord Nityananda went to Panihatigram and, following Lord Chaitanya's order, distributed devotional service. In Seshikan, Lord Nityananda, the great king of wrestlers, very mercifully delivered many merchants and others. In Seshikan, Lord Chaitanya, Supreme Personality of Godhead, enjoyed pastimes in Jagannath Puri for 18 years. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in Seshikan have no end. Veda Vyas will later describe them in great detail. As far as he is able, Lord Nityananda describes the glories of Lord Chaitanya. The great bliss that Lord Nityananda finds there has no end. Lord Nityananda's feet are the kings worshipped by Lord Anantadeh and Nantashesh. 
O Lord Chaitanya, please give to me the gift of service to Lord Nityananda's feet. Thus in sutras I have briefly described the contents of this book. Now I will begin to sing these three khandas. O brother, with single pointed attention, please hear the descriptions in the Adi Khanda, descriptions of Lord Chaitanya's descent to this world. The two moons, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Sri Nityananda, are my life and soul. I, Vrindavan Das, sing the glories of their feet. 